Welcome to Altium Designer Creating Schematic Symbols. In this module, we will learn how to make schematic symbols using manual and an automated wizard process. Let's start in Altium with a new schematic file. Click on File, then New, Library, Schematic Library. We will now save this to our current WC Topping Integrated Library folder. The new schematic library comes preset with the generic component called component underscore one. Double clicking on the component name in the schematic library panel opens up its library component properties window. Here we will set the default designator to C asterisk for this example. Normally we would use C question mark as that works with Altium's annotation tool for annotation operations. We can add a default comment. This is optional and we will set this field to capacitor 10 picofarad 16 volts. We can change the name of this component in the symbol reference field to more easily identify it. Let's enter cap 10 puff 16 volts. The parameters field located in the top right of this window contains the parts parameters, so we could add parameters now if we wanted, although I would recommend using the supplier search tool to add those parameters to the part. To add a parameter manually, click on the add button to open the library component window where we could enter the parameter value and parameter name. There are a number of options for customizing the property and I would encourage exploring them. One useful option is the visible checkbox. When checked, its field will be displayed when the component's placed in the schematics. This can be cleared later if desired. To delete a parameter, simply click on it to select it, then use the remove button, clicking yes when the dialog box opens up. The model section located at the bottom right of this window is where we would enter the footprints as well as spice or signal integrity models if desired. Now we've created the blank component with a unique name. Clicking on OK to close the properties window, we shift gears to the graphic design phase of symbol generation. As this symbol is a basic one, we will create it using graphic lines and then add pins to it. Clicking on the graphics icon, select place line. Now we can add the lines to create the capacitor symbol. Before we place the lines, hit the tab key to open up the properties window for the line. Here we see the polyline properties window. We can change the thickness of the line by clicking on the line width pull down menu. We can change the line style using a pull down menu as well. Keeping the current settings, let's set the color by clicking on the color field. We'll select black, although there are many other colors possible, and then click OK. Note there are line endpoint options as you can see by clicking on the line shape and and start pull down menus. The endpoint shape size can be set as well. Clicking OK sets these preferences and puts us back into the placement mode. We will add two parallel lines for the capacitor symbol and then right click to escape the line placement mode. One useful feature of Altium is it remembers these selections allowing you to repeat these settings for additional line placements. Again, we are adding the typical parallel plates for a capacitor which is non-polarized. Now we will add the pins. From the place pull-down menu, select Pin. This puts a pin attached to the mouse ready to be placed. Note, the tool remembers the last number used for a pin so that your pin may need to have its pin number set properly. Hitting Tab while the pin is still attached to the mouse opens up the Pin Properties window. Here we can set the pin name and designator. We will use one for both, but for more complex parts, you should consider naming them. As expected, there are many options and settings with pins. Let's look at a few. The electrical type is important and should be set properly. As this is a capacitor, we will leave the setting to passive. Looking at the options, we see there are quite a few. Setting this pin type will drive the electrical rule checking when compiling the project. Input types require a driver on the connected net. Likewise, outputs can drive but do not want multiple driving pins on the same net. There are a number of pin symbol options. Clicking on the pull-down menus allows us to set them. Here are a few examples. We will leave these to no symbol as they are not needed for the passive capacitor. Now that the pin is defined, we click OK and can place it. One very important detail, the pin has an electrical hotspot that really must be externally facing. It looks like a little cross on the end of the pin. If it's not in the right orientation, Tapping the space bar will rotate it, as long as we have not yet placed the pin. If we had placed it, selecting it and starting to move it using the mouse allows the space bar to once again rotate it. 
Placing the first pin will auto-increment the pin number so that we can now place the second pin, pin number 2. One typical issue that we have seen with schematic symbol generation is when those electrical hotspots are not externally facing. It looks like they're connected in the schematics, but in fact, since you have not connected to the actual component's hotspot, they are not connected and you will get errors and warnings. This would complete the symbol graphics and pins, but what about adding part number parameters? Let's use this supplier search feature in Altium to add supplier part numbers and parameters. This is the preferred method to put the information directly into the library component. If we were creating a generic part, we might consider leaving off this step and adding the particular part supplier information during schematic capture. Entering the capacitor information and clicking on search will pull in the matching supplier components for selection. To add the parameters from the part selected in the search, right click on it and pick Add Supplier Link and Parameters to the component. The advantage to putting the supplier parameters here is that for every place instance of the capacitor from this library, all the information is included. At this point, we are finished with the basic capture of the capacitor symbol. We would normally add the footprint at this point to the model section, assuming that we already had the right footprint in a library available. To add a footprint, click on Add Footprint. Now in the name field, enter the footprint name, 0603 underscore L. Next, we will point to the WC topic PCB library file by clicking on the library path. We would pick the PCB lib file. If we have the right name and library, we would see the footprint show up in the lower preview section. We can preview both the 3D and 2D views of this part by clicking on the 2D, 3D button. Click OK to add this footprint link to the symbol. At this point, we have completed the basic schematic symbol, given that we have a symbol with pins and a link to the proper footprint. Let's save the library. That was easy enough for a simple component, but for more complex components, we would recommend using the symbol wizard. With the schematic library open, we would add another component, and then start the symbol wizard by clicking on the tool pull-down menu and select symbol wizard. This opens up the symbol wizard window where we can specify the number of pins, the pin layout, and edit the pin information in tabular format. We will use a quad flat pack type device for this example. Enter 44 for the pin number, and then click on pin layout style and select quad side. Note you can use what works for you and follows your particular company standards. Now the graphic updates with our selections. We will create four groups, one per side. Clicking the first pin and then scrolling down to pin 11, selecting all of them, we enter one and hit carriage return. Now all those pins selected are assigned to group one. Likewise, we will do the same for three more groups, two through four. Now with the groups assigned, we can edit the pin names and electrical types. Entering the names manually can be done and is fast, but using cut and paste would be better. Here we are copying the names from an Excel spreadsheet and pasting them into the form. When editing the electrical type, I find it most helpful to select a group of pins that I want to assign the same value to. After selecting them, I click on the pull-down menu to set all of them to the same value. The first group is already set to input. The next type we will set is the power group, selecting all of them using first the left mouse button and then having the control key held down, we select the remaining pins. We can set this group to power by clicking on the last selected entry and picking power from the pull-down menu. We would continue this process, setting the electrical types as needed. With the pins assigned into groups by number, clicking on the split into groups box will arrange them into groups. Setting them into groups is a convenient way to assign all of them the same pin type. Checking the continue editing after placement box allows for this window to remain after placing this definition into the component. Clicking on place provides two options, place component and place part. Place component places the full component, place part creates one instance of a multi-part component. Typically what we are looking at currently in this case would generate multiple 44 pin parts, which is not what we want to do. So we would use the place component option in this case. We would use the place part to create schematic symbols for parts that have multiple components. A typical example would be a quad op amp. We would create the first operational amplifier symbol and then place the part four times so that the user can select which of the four devices to connect in the schematic. Obviously, you'd want to update the pin numbering for each placed part.
The other use for a multi-part component is for large devices like FPGAs, where groups of IOs would be assigned and arranged into parts. Again, clicking on the place component and then closing the wizard window, we can see the completed new schematic symbol. With the wizard editing complete, we will now need to adjust the graphic overlay in the schematic library view using Edit, Move, Send to Back, then we click on the rectangle to allow the pin names to be displayed. Double clicking on the component name in the schematic library panel opens up the properties window so that we could set the desired properties at this point. To finish off this component, we would normally add a footprint from an available library. If one does not exist yet, we could hold off assigning the footprint until one is ready. This concludes Module 29, Creating Schematic Symbols, where we covered manual and wizard-based methods for generating schematic symbols. Please do Exercise 29.